Hey, it is Michael. Welcome to the channel. And if you're clicking on this video, chances are you are thinking about cutting the cord and maybe you don't know where to start. Well, today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process step by step, the seven steps you need to take to cut the cord. You know, with so many options out there, the process of cutting the cord can easily become complicated and overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. When you are just starting out, you don't need to spend days and weeks researching the best ways to cut the cord because that's my job. I've been doing it since 2016, helping thousands of people just like you switch from cable to live TV streaming. So right now we're going to go through those seven steps. It is a simple but detailed plan of how you can drop your big cable bundle and switch to a live TV streaming service that has the best of cable at a lower monthly price. Let's get started. Number one, Review your cable TV bill. The first step to cutting the cable cord is to check your last cable TV bill. And specifically, you're looking to see if you're locked in a contract and may face an early termination fee when you cancel. If you don't have a contract, you can skip ahead to the next step in the process. But if you do have a contract, read the fine print and find out when that contract ends. But if you can't get clarity in the fine print, you need to live chat or call customer service and ask them these three questions. Number one, I'm thinking about canceling cable TV service. Will I owe an early termination fee? Number two, if so, how much is the early termination fee? And number three, can I avoid paying an early termination fee if I keep internet service? And that last question is key because some cable TV providers are waiving the early termination fee if you sign on for an internet only plan. There's a catch though, you may be required to sign a contract for that internet plan. And speaking of internet service, that is step two, get quotes for internet service. All live TV streaming services require a high speed internet connection, every single one of them. So cutting the cord makes the most sense for people who already have internet or are willing to pay for it. And to help you identify the best internet deal, there are three factors to consider, price, download speed, and data caps. Let's talk more about each of them. For price, if your cable company is your only option for internet service, call them up and see how much an internet only plan will cost. But if you're lucky enough to have a second option for internet like from the phone company, you can check their prices too. When I pulled my YouTube community about the cost of internet service, the majority of the nearly 300 people who responded said they pay $50 to $75 a month. And one way to lower that price is by purchasing your own modem and router instead of renting equipment. Next to download speed and to stream live TV without any lag or buffering, you're going to need an internet plan that can meet those needs. For a typical household, I recommend buying an internet plan with download speeds ranging from 50 to 100 megabits per second and preferably 200 megabits per second. It is possible to stream with a 25 megabits per second plan but service may not be as reliable. With an internet plan that has download speeds of 100 to 200 megabits per second, a handful of devices can be connected to the internet at the same time, no buffering. And now to data caps, because with the rise of streaming, some internet service providers have added data caps to their plans, and that can result in extra fees. This is really going to impact larger households and heavy users. If the internet service providers in your area have data caps, you may be able to pay an extra $25 to $50 a month for unlimited data. However, internet providers insist that most customers are not affected by data caps. And this is important. If you currently have internet service, don't make any changes to your plan at this point. For this step, you are just getting quotes for internet only plans. Next up, setting a streaming TV budget. That is the third step to cutting the cord. After you have determined the cost of an internet only plan from the previous step, you can subtract that amount from your current cable and internet bundle. And this is going to help you figure out the potential savings from switching to streaming. For example, if you have a $150 cable and internet bundle, and then you get quoted $60 for internet service alone, that leaves $90 for your streaming TV budget. Some live TV streaming services advertise that they are about half the price of cable, but it really varies. And the more expensive live TV streaming plans, they have more well-rounded channel lineups that include local broadcast stations, the most popular sports networks, as well as the popular cable news networks. I'll share my recommendation for the best live TV streaming service for beginners 
coming up in just a minute. Right now though, step four, buy an entry level streaming device. Live TV streaming services do not have monthly equipment fees, no more cable boxes, but you may have to purchase a streaming media player to stream on your TV. One popular brand is Roku, and this is the Roku Premiere, a good option if you're on a budget or just starting out. For a one-time cost of less than $50, Roku Premiere and Roku Streaming Stick Plus are two great options for first-time streamers. Roku devices plug into your TV and connect to the internet to allow you to stream. Each device comes with a remote so that you can navigate all of your streaming apps. If you are intimidated by this part of the process, don't be. Rokus are really easy to get started with. I've got the Roku Premiere in my hand. Here's the device, and you can see there are two cords. The first one is going to go into the back of your TV set into the HDMI input, and the second one is a power cord that'll go into a power outlet. You also have the remote. It comes with batteries too, so you don't have anything extra to buy. And when you turn on your TV after setting this all up for the first time, you will get instructions on the screen that are gonna walk you through this step-by-step -step to connect to the internet. So let me show you the box again for the Roku Premiere. There are other options besides Roku. They include Amazon Fire TV and Chromecast with Google TV. I like them too, I have those devices, but I recommend the Roku for first-time streamers. You can't go wrong with the Roku. And one more point here, if you have a fairly new smart TV, you may be able to skip this step because the live TV streaming services may be pre-installed or available for download from your smart TV. However, I still like the Roku because you can get access to content that you won't find elsewhere. Moving on to step number five, test out a live TV streaming service while you're still paying for cable TV. And there are a handful of options to consider, but I recommend that you start with YouTube TV. YouTube TV is one of the more expensive options, but it is also the most cable-like of the major live TV streaming services, and it is still cheaper than cable. It includes more than 85 cable channels, local stations, your ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and PBS, unlimited cloud DVR, up to three streams at once, and a simple navigation. You can access YouTube TV from select smart TVs as well as compatible devices like your Roku. YouTube TV typically offers a one week free trial and by the end of that time, you should know if live TV streaming is a suitable cable alternative. During your YouTube TV free trial, compare its channel lineup to what you're getting with your cable TV provider. Go through your cable TV live guide and write down all of your must have channels and then repeat the process using YouTube TV's live guide. You also want to use your free trial period to evaluate YouTube TV's user experience and performance. Here are some questions to answer. Number one, how long does it take to change channels? Number two, is there any lag or buffering? And number three, have there been any error messages? You can get YouTube TV's free trial offer directly from its website. Usually no promo code is necessary. And after you sign up, just make a note of when that trial ends so that you can cancel it if you're not going to continue the service. You do have to provide payment information when you sign up for the trial, but if you cancel before it expires, you won't be charged. So if you test out YouTube TV and there are no major issues, I recommend that you stick with it for a month or two while you adjust from cable to streaming. But if there are some things that aren't working out with YouTube TV, here are some alternatives. So if you want to extend your testing period, you can sign up for multiple free trials from multiple services, and then see which one you prefer. Step number six, cancel cable TV service. We're almost there after you've tried out YouTube TV and perhaps other live TV streaming services. It is time to call up your cable TV provider and tell them you want to cancel. I recommend that you cancel by phone and call early in the day for a shorter wait time. And during that phone call, you may be able to negotiate with customer service for a lower price on an internet only plan. If you have a competing offer from a phone company, this is the time to mention it. Once you've dropped cable TV, make sure that you return any rental equipment to your provider to avoid paying additional fees. So congrats, you've officially cut the cord and switched to streaming. But we are not finished yet. Step seven is to continue to comparison shop. If you like everything about cable TV except the high price, the combination of YouTube TV and an entry-level Roku device is a great way to start streaming TV. However, you can save money by periodically comparing streaming plans and deals. And this is possible because cable is different from streaming in another way. 
With streaming services, there are no contracts, so you have the flexibility to switch providers whenever you want to. Here's an example. If you only need live TV streaming for a football season, you could cancel YouTube TV during the off season and try a cheaper option like Sling TV or Philo. Based on my viewing habits, I switch between different streaming services several times a year, all to save more money. But I suggest that first-time streamers master YouTube TV with a Roku Premiere or Roku Streaming Stick Plus to start. Sure, it's a one-size-fits-all plan, but it works for most people because it is so simple. So good luck with your transition from cable to streaming. I have written instructions, this step-by-step -step guide, on my website, michaelsaves.com. I will link to that in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please like it, consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll see you back here soon. Take care.